Welcome to Executive Insights. My guest today is Howard Houghton, Chief Information Security Officer and Head of Enterprise Architecture with Reem Manufacturing. In this episode, we explore what digital transformation means for a century-old manufacturing company and Howard's perspectives about leading and driving change. We also discuss the one thing that concerns Howard the most at this moment in time. Hi, Howard. So great to see you. Welcome to Executive Insights. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you too. Howard, you and I first met last year when I was a guest on your podcast. And back then, you were working for a different company in a different industry. I'm wondering what compelled you to become part of Ream? So I could ask this a lot um, because I went from you know a tech company uh, to a manufacturing company, and everybody that also works in tech was kind of like, "Why? Why? Like I don't I don't understand." Um, but there's a couple of big reasons. The first is um, they're going through digital transformation, and they're right at the very beginning. And there's something kind of wonderful about being able to help guide a company through that from that beginning. A lot further along than I than I did um, working for a tech company, right? Working for a tech company, it was always the beginning stages, kind of initial planning, and then um, you know you pull the pull the parachute and move on to the next to the next customer. So I really wanted to see a little bit more depth. But as I learned about Reem, uh, the other reason, which which I find far more compelling, became important or became apparent, which is um, they have a, such a great culture. They're not doing digital transformation because they think they need to. They're doing digital transformation because they they truly believe they need to become a data uh, informed and data driven company. It's exciting. Yeah, I can see that. Um, as the saying goes, we choose people, not the company. But in this case, it sounds like you chose both. I, I did. I did. When, when I interviewed, um, I interviewed with uh, head, the heads of business. Right. Uh, obviously, I liked the the person who would become my my supervisor. But it was really rare uh, interviewing with the heads of business. And it, I hung up every phone call, right? Ended every interview. And the first thought that came into my head was, hmm, I would absolutely work for that person. And I don't know that I've had that in my career where every single person, it wasn't just that I liked them. It wasn't that I enjoyed. It wasn't that I said, oh, I could work, you know, I could help support this person in their objectives. But literally, I could work directly for this person, even with them not being technologists. And that, and that was kind of unique for me. I um, mean, that was honestly what sealed the deal for me. Yeah, certainly sounds like you made the right decision. Now, what does digital transformation look like in a century-old manufacturing company? Where is the biggest opportunity? So the definition of digital transformation is to change your company to deliver your products in the way your customers wish they could receive them. And the wish is actually the most important part. We could easily spend the entire time talking about what, what digital transformation kind of means for the world and everything else. But to be kind of specific in, in, in response, it means the same for Reem as it means for everyone else. It means, it means truly being customer centric, right? Step one is who is your customer and what is the value that you bring? Um, and, and for most companies, especially those that have been around a long time, the history of the world is the customer comes to you. We don't meet the customer where they are. We don't, we don't really traditionally define what the journey looks like, right? Those are all things that, that digital transformation really drives. We use data to determine who our customer is. We use data to determine what that customer segment is that they fit into. We use data to determine what the experience should look like and how that matters. We use data to measure those things. And that's all of the things that Reem is trying to do, right? How do we become data center? How do we become customer centric in a data driven world? Um, and how do we d d discover customers we didn't even realize were our customers? And then how do we serve them where they are, not make them come to us? Yeah. So if there's one thing that the pandemic has told us is the value of data driven decisions. And I can certainly appreciate the fact that you're choosing a company in the industry where you can impact the most change. And speaking of change in your role as the head of information security and enterprise architecture, how do you drive change, especially in a culture that prides itself for long-term commitment and stability? That's a great question. Um, I, I do it the same way I kind of do everything. I lead from the front. 
right? Um, I find it's much, much, much easier to lead people to a decision than simply tell them a decision has been made, right? I aim for how do I get people to realize this is the right decision? This is the best decision. So some of it is me being new to Reem, right? Um, I haven't been there very long. And while I have a ton of experience in digital transformation, um, I don't have a ton of experience in Reem. So part of it has been um, me bringing the lessons from consulting in digital transformation to Reem, right? These are what we look for in digital transformation. These are the things that we concentrate on. These are what KPIs really are and what they're supposed to mean. This is what it means to do customer segmentation, et cetera, et cetera, customer identification. Some of it is learning why Reem works the way they do, um, why this particular manufacturing company has been so successful for so long, right? Um, it's not about the Reem way. It's about what makes Reem so wonderful and how do we take that and combine it, right? And so some of it is leading people to a decision. Some of it is how we're learning what that decision means within the context of Reem. Um, and, and I actually think it's that collaboration that creates success, right? Success can't just be found with the new guy coming in and saying, this is what you're now going to do. Success has to be found in while these are the lessons I bring from my experience, can I have the lessons that you've bring, brought from yours so we can combine those and create what, it, what, what, what is a more perfect picture of what we can become together? Yeah, well said. I think the secret weapon for any leaders, especially new leaders, is the ability to listen and truly understand the organizational DNA. So you're certainly doing that very well. And speaking of leadership, I've noticed, you know, from your LinkedIn posts and from speaking with you that you're very passionate about the topic of leadership. But what I found fascinating, you know, in our last conversation is that you said you weren't set out to be a leader. Leadership comes about not by design, but rather by happenstance. So I'm wondering, what have you done over the years to make yourself a better leader? Any tips? Um, actually, the best thing that I've done is what you said before, which is um, good leaders listen. Um, if I could reduce it to one thing, that would be it. Um, I, I, you're right, I didn't choose leadership. Um, I didn't choose IT either, really. Uh, I was just a nerdy kid that was building software to keep track of his baseball card collection. My dad was a law professor, and and I thought I was going to be an attorney. I was studying hard for it. I was I was practicing. We went to court frequently. Um, I was helping him at the law office, right? Even when I was making money in IT, I still thought I was going to be an attorney. I just thought this was some temporary thing. There was no way it was going to last, right? I'm a high school kid making way too much money in IT, not really thinking about it like a career. And before long, I kind of looked around and went, I, this is weird. I'm, I've been doing this for a long time. I guess I'm not going to be a, a, an attorney. And leadership came about the same way. Um, I, I was an engineer. I like being an engineer. I liked being an individual contributor. I liked making things work sitting in front of a keyboard. But I was always the person that got asked to stand up in front and present the results, present the project, present the fix, present the after action report, whatever it happened to be. And then I got asked to join a council here and a council there. And before long, people were kind of going, well, Howard will talk about it because, you know, he speaks well. And then I got a team and then I got a larger team and then I got an even larger team. And I kind of like woke up one day and went, I think I'm in leadership. This is weird. And so I listened and looked the same way that I do everything, right? I consumed every piece of information I could find about leadership, good and bad, right? What are the lessons I've learned from, the, from every leader I've ever had, from every leader I've ever seen? And, and I tried to figure out, okay, if this is all the stuff that I've seen, can I categorize it as things I want to be and things I don't want to be? Feelings I want in my people and feelings I don't want to create in my people. And I have to say, I've learned probably as much from bad leaders as good. I've learned as much from, I probably shouldn't do that because that didn't make me feel good when someone did it to me. As I have from, holy crap, do I love the way I'm going to call out my favorite mentor, Paul Lewis, right? Holy crap, Paul, I love the way you did that. I'm totally stealing that next week. We're not perfect. None of us are. There's no, there's no perfect leader. The best leader also has a worse day. 
right? The trick is is to uh, to mo both minimize them and not repeat them. Yeah, very true. I think the ability to listen and to truly be able to emulate great leaders and apply the lessons you've learned from bad leaders as well, that will help you grow. We've been in this pandemic limbo for so long. And, you know, one thing that I myself have learned is it really is a continuously evolving situation, which means we have to always keep an open mind and continue to evolve our approaches to things as well. As a senior technology executive, what do you think that you yourself and your peers should be looking out for at this moment in time? Failing morale. In, in individuals, right? Um, team dynamics are team dynamics because we're a team. Like we get together, we're in the same space, we're in the same room, we think about the same thing and have the same vision of it. Lack of team dynamics harms the team, but but can be rebuilt, um, can be recovered, right? Um, human beings naturally form tribes. Um, and so reforming a tribe or, or kind of catching up on the loss of, of that kind of tribe can be recovered. My biggest concern is um, the individual morale that's not recovering fast enough, that's not being fed fast enough, that's not being cared for well enough right now. Um, there are millions of people that their tribe is 100% of the people they see at work. They don't have someone at home. They don't, ha you know, they go home and, and they feel the emptiness of, of where they're at. Um, and my biggest concern is that they're not being fed, that they're not being cared for. I don't mean physically fed, I mean emotionally and, and, and mentally. And, and it's a pandemic of the mental health kind um, and one that I, that I am actively concerned about, um, especially the longer and longer and longer we don't give them another outlet. And I'm not saying everyone needs to come back to work and I'm not saying that I have all the, all the answers, but there are definitely some people that are suffering from their um, isolation. And, and, and I would say that's probably my biggest concern. Um, where are those people in my organization that maybe I don't even know about? So, Howard, I've really enjoyed this conversation. I wish we have an hour to keep talking. I really appreciate your time and hope to uh, have you back next year. So thank you very sure. much. I think it'd be great. Thank you. You've been watching another episode of Executive Insights by the IT Media Group. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, please check out other content on our YouTube channel including CIO roundtable conversations and executive interviews. And don't forget to subscribe.